please welcome Mary Teresa Arsbo. Come on! University of Michigan, I quickly realized that one of these things is not like the other. All the girls there were perfect. Long, lean, hair in a perfect bun, no flyaways. And there I was in a brightly colored leotard, tan tights, and a ponytail with my curly phrase going everywhere. And then they all did their audition pieces, which were meaningful pieces of modern dance. <laughs> and then I did my audition piece which was a jazz routine to Huey Lewis in the News, hip to be square. <laughs> and when I finished my piece, the director of the program looked at me and said, wow, we've never had one like you before. <laughs> and I quickly realized, wow, he's talking about my arm. You see, uh, I am an amputee. I'm a congenital amputee, so it's always been this way. Uh, and I have worn a prosthetic since I was about three months old, um, except for a short stint in high school when I had an injury. And I sort of lived in this bubble that everyone knew about it and didn't seem to judge me for it. I was just Mary to them. And to have someone point this out to me so blatantly, I realized that's how the world sees me, not as normal as something different. And it freaked me out. <laughs> so that summer, I told my mother I wanted to go back to wearing prosthetics before I started to go to school with 20,000 of my new friends. And she agreed, and $20,000 later, I had a lovely arm that I went to school with. And then I started college, determined to appear normal and no one would know. There was a problem right up the at the bat. I had roommates and you live with them. <laughs> and you might not know, but you cannot wear a prosthetic 24 hours a day. It's terrible for your skin. Your skin will actually break down and bleed. So my way of hiding it was at the end of the night, I would get into bed, pull my covers up really tight, and take off my arm underneath the covers. And the first thing I did in the morning was put it back on and then get out of bed. Gracefully, I'm sure. <laughs> and I succeeded. I appeared normal and then Eventually, I was getting married, and I was looking for the most important part of your wedding, the dress, and I found the dress, and I knew it was the dress because my mother started to cry when she saw me in it. <laughs> and there was only one problem with the dress. It was strapless, and that meant that my arm would be showing, and on my wedding day, I wouldn't appear normal. And so my mother had these wonderful long gloves made and they covered my arm beautifully. But somehow on the morning of my wedding, I decided I'm not gonna wear them. I'm just gonna go as me. And there I stood at the back of the church about to go to my wedding and I pulled my veil over my arm. And then I moved to New York and I'm a professional actor. And <laughs> yeah, and so I'm performing and I'm working with a wonderful company that's called an integrated company where they have able-bodied and disabled actors performing together. And everything was going great and I did a wonderful new piece by Neil Labute and the New York Times came to review it and they said it was wonderful and they pointed me out and they said it was only unfortunate that it was performed by an able-bodied actress. <laughs> this was my coup de grace. <laughs> the New York Times said I was able-bodied. <laughs> so it doesn't get better, I have arrived. And then, just at that moment, I got the biggest challenge to appearing normal. I became a mother. Yeah, so luckily when you're pregnant, which is 10 months, not nine, just for clarification's sake, <laughs> you have a long time to think about how you want to deal with your prosthesis and your children, because you worry not just about yourself, about what will they face? How will they explain it? What will they think of it? Will they see me not as normal? And I decided before I had my son, I wasn't gonna let him see me not normal. 
So I was going to take care of my son with my prosthesis on. So when he came home, I was working with my arm and taking care of an infant. And I realized as I'm feeding him, his head is resting on my prosthesis, which is metal. And I realize I'm changing his diaper and a squirming baby is moving. So I place my arm across his chest to try to hold it down. And I'm resting two and a half pounds on a five pound, 10 ounce baby to keep him in place. And I'm thinking, well, I will appear normal, so it's fine, it's fine. And then I got my biggest challenge yet. I had to bathe him. Uh, prosthesis, just so you know, can't get wet, ever. Bad, metal, water, not good. So after about 10 days of my son being home, my mother said to me, you must bathe your child, he's filthy. So I set it all up, got in the sink, got the little leaning board for him to be on, the towel, the soap, the washcloth, the secondary towel in case there's spillage. I'm all set up and I realize I am freaking out. I do not know how I'm going to do this. So as I turn on the water and place my son into the sink, this is a new experience for him and me. And I am trying desperately to do this all with one arm. So I take my prosthesis behind my back and I start trying to wash him and put the soap on the washcloth and rub him down and he's starting to slide down this deeper into the sink and I feel like I can't pick him back up because my hand's now slippery and I'm trying to lift him up and he starts crying and the one person he looks to for trust, the one heartbeat he heard for 10 months is crying too. I was freaking out. I didn't know how to take care of my son because my arm was in the way. So I took off my arm, threw it on the ground, and took care of my son. And in that moment, I was me with him. And it was one of the most beautiful connections I've ever dreamed of, of being a mother. And things since then have been great. He's three. And for the most part, I don't wear my arm in front of my son. So much so that if I put it on, he asks me, are we going out? <laughs> and now I know as he goes into the world, there will be questions and there will be times that he will have questions. And I know he'll look at other mothers and see things that I can't do. I can't play patty cake. I can't hold him with my fingers and lift him up into the air. And I know someday he'll look at those mothers that can do that and say, wow, I've never seen one like that before. Thank you. That's Mary Teresa Archbold, give it up for her.